help if I turn on my projector. All right, uh, we're going to start with the ISIN as usual uh, for 10.4 notes. Technology issue here. All right, we're going to be talking about inscribed angles and polygons in side of the circle. That means angles that are inside the circle with a vertex on the circle. So an inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on the circle and whose sides contain chords of the circle. So the chords here are ED and EF. And where those points are on the circle here, um, the vertex is B, e, and then through D, through F, that cuts off an arc. Okay, the in, the um, arc that it cuts off is arc DF. The relationship between angle DEF and arc DF is that the measure of angle DEF is half the measure of the arc. So if you know the other way around, say if this was X, then what would the arc be? If you know the angle, the arc would be twice x. Kind of an easier way to write it than putting the x out here and writing one half x there. So you have to be able to go backwards and forwards. So in the minor uh, arc circle with center D, minor arc TF is the intercepted arc for inscribed angle DEF. All right, now the inscribed angle theorem just says if an angle is inscribed in a circle, then the measure of the angle equals one half the measure of its intercepted arc. So the relationship, the intercepted arcs are in blue on the, this picture, but I'm coloring it green. Here it's A to C. They're all A to C, but they're just in various different looks. This one goes straight through the center, so that ray BC or chord BC is actually a diameter. They don't have to be though, okay? These aren't diameters. The relationship is still the same. All right, so for some examples, the intercepted arc is AC. The angle um, ABC is 36. So what's the relationship? Well, the measure of the arc is twice the measure of the angle. 2 times 36, which would be 72 degrees. Now, this one's the converse of that. Given the arc measure for KL, what is the angle measure? Well, this angle right here would be half of 62. Yeah, 31 degrees. Okay, and this would have been the... All right, the third one, this big old angle here, it's 113, so to find the arc, we just double it, and this time it's the major arc, QSR, 2 times 113 is 226, as Kate said. Also, pardon me? My daughter has one too. Soccer. Who? Hananiga. Thanks. They beat him last year. Okay, if two inscribed angles intercept the same arc or congruent arcs, then the angles are congruent. Now here's the deal. C, chord CA, B, and chord CB intercept arc AB. In this, also, this blue one, or the way my picture is colored, chord DA and DB, they end in the same arc. That would make 
these angles equal. And then also way down here by E, E, A, E, B are the chords that make angle A, E, B. That is also equal to the other two. All three of those ang angles are equal because they intercept the same arc. Find each measure. So using that concept, the measure of angle U, we're going to find TU, chord TU, and TV, make angle UTV. The arc that is intercepted is here, UV, arc UV. The other angle, UWV, is made by chord WU and chord WV intercept the same arc. Therefore, these angle measures are equal. So now I can go and find angle U. Well, I guess I could have done that. What is angle U? Let's go the other way now. You see how if you came from U to T, let's see, uh, I want to show you the other angles that are U to T and U to W. Here's another arc that is intercepted by two different angle, inscribed angles. These are also equal to one another. All right, which would mean that angle V is 30, angle U is also 30. Okay, now to find X, we're going to go over here and set these two equal to each other. So we have a little algebra to do for that. 3x plus 4 equals 2x plus 9. Subtract 2x from both sides. And then subtract 4 from both sides to get x is 5. If x is 5, the measure of angle T can be found by substituting 5 back in. Yep, 3 times 5 plus 4, you are right, is 19 degrees. Good. Oh my goodness. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Two of you said it. All right. Is that, I think we have another page though on the back of the ISM. Yep. Continued. Yes. An inscribed polygon is one whose sides are chords of a circle and whose vertices are points on the circle. Inscribed polygons have several properties. So we you can draw anything you want inside of a circle. I've forgotten why I have this blank circle up here, but um, the main point will be an inscribed angle of a triangle intercepts a diameter if, if an inscribed um, triangle intercepts a diameter of a, or semicircle. It only does so if the angle is a right angle. So let's just draw a separate one here. Let's draw a diameter. Now, you may remember that half of a circle is, I hope, 180 degrees, okay? If I take any corner here from, well, from the end of the diameter, and I draw it to a point there on the circle, another point on the circle, and I draw from that point to the other end of the diameter, this angle up here must be one, uh, 90 degrees. Well, why is that? Well, because we said the inscribed angles are half the measure of their intercepted arc. The measure of this intercepted arc here is 180, and half of 180 is 90. Okay, that's why this is the way it is. So, if the measure of arc BCD, or if arc BCD is a semicircle, so if you go over here, B through C to D, that is half of a circle, then that means that angle BCD, it's actually angle BAD is 90, so let's fill in that blank. And going the other way, angle, and we just found angle BAD must be 90. And since there's a semicircle on the other side, of course, what other angle is 90? That's the one they wrote, BCD. Mm -hmm. 
to be a right angle on either side. If a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then its opposite angles are supplementary. This is another one we want to know. Angle A plus angle C is 180, and also angle B plus angle C is 180. So some examples of how to use that. Find each measure. So here we have find x. Okay, this angle is labeled with where the w is as x plus 12. Because wx is a diameter, we know that angle y is a right angle, angle wyx. So what do the angles add up to in a triangle? Right, 180. x plus 12 plus x plus 90 is 180. Or you may have remembered that the acute angles of a right triangle are complementary, meaning these two angles add up to a 90 as well. You could have set it up with that. But if we go ahead and add 2x, 12 plus 90 is 102. 180, subtract 102 from 180 or from both sides and get 78. Divide by 2 and we'll find that x is that. Half of that would be 39, right? 78 divided by 2? No, you're not. X is 39. All right, to find the measure of angle W, we would plug that back in. X plus 12 is angle W, so we're going to do 39 plus 12, 51 degrees. All right? U P S R is an inscribed quadrilateral. Find X and Y. All right, once you know you have an inscribed quadrilateral, one thing we know, a quadrilateral's angles add up to 360. But I've got Y's and X's. So I'm going to use, yep, that these add up to 180. So to find X, 3X minus 5, plus 3x plus 5 equals 180. 3x plus 3x is 6x. The 5s cancel out because they're opposites. So we've got 6x equals 180. Divide by 6, and we get 30. All right, so we found x is 30. Now we're going to find y because these angles add up to 180. 11y plus 7y equals 180. 18y equals 180 then. And yes, you're right, it is at y's value is 10. Okay, now we're going to go to the packet. Just a little um, aside, this is not in your packet. You see this central angle? If that's the center of the circle, I want you to remember that. The intercepted arc here has central angle, is the same measure as the central angle. So if that's 90, this would be 90. But this angle would be half of 90. So it would be. 45. All right, so an inscribed angle is an angle whose vertex is on the circle whose sides contain chords of the circle. In the circle with center G, minor arc DF is the intercepted arc. Okay. <clears throat> Let me grab your worksheet. Just make sure I'm looking at the same thing as you are. Okay, and then we want to know that angle DEF is equal to one half of this. So on our ISN, I put an X there, then this would be 2X. That's the relationship. Okay, and that's just the same picture you have in your packet. 
All right, so again, if two inscribed angles intercept the same arc or congruent arc, then the angles are congruent. Again, this is the intercepted arc is AB. Because angle ACB intercepts that arc and angle ADB intercepts that arc and angle AEB intercepts that arc, they are all the same size angle. And they would be half of arc AB. Can I move on? All right. Here we go. Example one. In the circle with center G, arc DF is 90. That's out there. This angle would be half of 90, so it would be 45. Find each measure, number two. Says what's the arc, uh, find the measure of arc M, P. That's here. Okay. So don't assume you're just finding MN. Oops, I meant to change the color there. What? My pen. It won't. Is that strange? My little pen. Please. <laughs> oh, well, I can't get it to change color. All right, from here to here is 62 because we would double the angle. Now, this, if, if you couldn't tell me, and I, don't, I didn't see anything showing me that this was the center of the circle. We would actually need to know that, that that was the center of the circle so we could find MP. Because the only way for us to find MP is to do 180 minus 62. Which would be 118 degrees. And we had to know that that was the center. So that really should have been on the picture. I have no idea why this is not allowing me to. All right. Nothing. It's just my little. I just figured out a way to get this pen to change color. It wasn't doing it for me. All right. What are we going to do in this chunk? Because we need that so we can find angle R. Kind of, um, kind of what you said is logical. Uh, wait, what you said was a little off in that we need to take 360 and subtract those. Guys, I am trying to record. That's 360. Minus 260, which would have been 100. Oh, but is that angle R, though? Oh, that's 100, so angle R is actually half of it, 50. That's the motto. Okay. Find each measure for this diagram. All right, we're going to look for X. So I'm going to look up here and see 6X minus 3 on angle ABD. So I want to check what arc that inter ABD intersects. Angle ABD intercepts arc AD. And so does angle ACD. Okay. That intercepts this arc. And I don't like that I have to make that noise just to change colors. This intercepts that arc. That makes this angle by B and the angle by C congruent. So we're going to do 7x minus 11 equals 6x minus 3. We can track 6x from both sides. Be careful. Make sure you ring down that that's a negative 3. And then we're going to add 11. And negative 3 plus 11 is 8. Going in the opposite direction, the angle BAC intercepts arc BC, and so does angle EDC. That makes these two angles down here congruent. So now we can set 6Y 
minus 2 equal to 5y plus 8. Now I can skip number 5. We would need to go, we could have gone back and found angle C by plugging in and doing 7 times 8 minus 11. That's 56 minus 11. This should have been 45. I should finish my problem six. Six y minus two equals five y plus eight. I imagine some of you already solved this. Subtract five y, add two, and get y is ten. Oh, apparently there's a type. No, the worksheet's been fixed. Don't have to worry about this little thing right here. Okay, and how did you get 58? We'll log it in. All right, 6 times 10 minus 2. Yes. Oh, my. Nothing worse than in English. <laughs> you didn't do too bad. Yes, Nathan? Hmm? Oh, all right. Okay, Inscri angles of inscribed polygons and inscribed an inscribed polygon is one whose sides are chords of a circle and whose vertices are points on the circle. Inscribed polygons have several properties, um, which you guys have already turned the page. It states the inscribed um, angle of a triangle intercepts its diameter if and only if the angle is a right angle. So, according to that, since BD is a diameter, it cut the circle in half, creating right angle BAD and right angle BCD. If BCD is a semicircle, then angle BCD is, a, is 90 degrees. If a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then its opposite angles are supplementary. We already talked about that. The eye angles across from each other here are supplementary. Both of those are 90 as well. And then angle ABC plus angle ADC would also be 180. All right, so let's check out this inscribed triangle. You see that these arcs are equal with those little slashes? All right, that would mean that the chords are equal, and that's from section 10-2, or 10-3, it didn't really matter which section it's from, but this is an isosceles triangle. Because it's an isosceles triangle, therefore angle L and M are congruent by if sides then base angles. Angle L equals angle M, so angle M is also 3X plus 5. Now I can take and add up all the triangle angles of the triangle, which would add up to how much? Yes. 180. Now, if you wanted to go ahead and simplify as you went through that, that would have been fine. But I've got 5x, 3x, and 3x. That's 11x. And then I've got 5 plus 5 plus 5, which is 15 equals 180. And next I subtract 15 from both sides, get 165. 11x equals 165. Divide by 11 and x is, I believe, 15. Is it not? Is it 15? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Find each measure. First of all, if I want to, this is just like the one in our ASN, I believe. We'll go kind of quickly. If WX is a diameter, then angle Y must be 90. The angles of the triangle add up to 180. So you can add X and X and 12 and 90. X plus X plus 12 plus 90 equals 180. 2X 
plus 102 equals 180. Subtracting 102, we get 78. And dividing by 2, we get 39. Now it says find the measure of angle W, and this is, again, just like one that we did in our ISN. So since angle W is X plus 12, we're going to do 39 plus 12 and get that angle W is 51. Okay. All right. Does anybody still need this? All right, number 10, same concept. Since RT is a diameter, angle S has to be a right angle. The angles of the triangle add up to 180. Well, what if you did 180 minus 90 right now? You get 90. These are complementary. They add up to 90. So you could just do this as well, and it would be a little bit less. No, that's a 6, not a 16. 2x plus 4x is 6x. Add 6 to both sides. Get 96. Divide by 6 and we get 16. Now we can find the measure of angle T by substituting back in and doing 4 times 16 minus 6. 64 minus 6 gives us a measure of angle T is 58. Okay. Did I go too fast? Wait a moment. What happened? Okay, now we have an inscribed quadrilateral. Okay, so it's inscribed, which means opposite angles are supplementary. So to find angle R, we're going to do 3x plus 75 equals 180. Subtract 75 from 180, we get 105. Divide by 3, and we get 35. And it said to find the measure of angle R, so we can do 3 times 35. Well, guess what? That was 105. Find angle S, we can just stick in the 35 here. 2 times 35 would be 70. You're correct. Okay. Anybody still need this page? Yes. <clears throat> okay. All right, the same concept applies for this problem. Opposite angles are supplementary. So 2x plus x plus 18 equals 180. 3x plus 18 is 180 then. Subtract 18. I think that's 162. Divide by 3. To get 54. Now that's just x, so I have not found angle w yet. I got to plug it in, so it would be 54 plus 18. Seventy-two. Right, now if I want to find angle X, I'm going to need to do a next, another problem. Opposite angles, oops, 
I'm going to change color here. Angles X and Z add up to 180. So 3Y minus 7 plus 3Y plus 1 equals 180. I get 6Y minus 7 plus 1, or negative 7 plus 1 would be negative 6. So now I need to add 6 and divide by 6. That gives me, oops, not x, y is 31. Now I need to plug it in. I'm supposed to be finding angle x, so I have to do 3 times 31 minus 7. 93 minus 7. 86 is correct. Okay. <coughs> Your homework will be to practice. You can get going on that now. You got quite a bit of time left. 